Hi, um, so today is March 2nd and I was in mom and baby. Um, I did a mom assessment and I did a baby assessment, but the two are not related. Um, so to start off with, I did my uh, mom, mom assessment on a 24 year old female patient um, who had uh, a C-section she del she delivered yesterday so March 1st 20 2021 at 10:28 a.m. Um, she has a gravita of six um, zero to term three preterm two um, lost and one living I'm sorry two living um, her her baby is up in the NICU because of weight. So it was extremely underweight. The birth weight was 2.99 kilograms. Um, and the reason why they did the C-section was due to a previous infant death. Um, it seems as if in her history, her um, births don't go past um, 30 weeks. So it was actually um, interesting that this one went uh, to 37 weeks. So other than that, um, mom is bl uh, blood type B positive, HIV negative, Hep B negative, RPR negative, uh, gonorrhea and chlamydia negative, and rubella immune, and she is GBS positive. So I did see in the H&P that she was on prophylactic antibiotic um, before her c-section however it does say that it said that it was less than four hours which is what's the recommended uh, but it didn't specify for how long um, upon assessment um, her breasts were soft normal um, breath sounds were normal clear bilaterally um, the uh, i was able to assess the fundus um, it was on a negative one it was firm um, her C-section incision was normal, clean, and dry and intact, although there were two spots of blood that were noted. Um, abdomen was soft, non-distended. There was bowel sounds present times four, but they were hypoactive. Um, she did, uh, uh, she did have void, um, times two at the time of my assessment, but she ended up voiding a um, thousand mLs, which is what we want them to do, especially after we DC a cath a Foley, um, which the Foley was DC'd at um, 0600. Um, I, let, I checked for the Lokia, so it was Rubra, the amount was scant, um, there was no odor present, um, no edema, there was no calf tenderness, she was on um, SCDs, and she did ambulate. Um, we, My nurse was very adamant about ambulating, so she was able to do that. She actually gave herself a shower, was able to use the restroom on her own. Um, she was A&O times four, and she was very calm, receptive. Um, I did write that um, my recommendation was just to continue to manage pain. Um, she did ask for Percocet. She said that um, it was just like a lot of after, after pains that were occurring. So I just wrote that my outcomes were going to be, um, she was, the patient was going to express pain less than three on a scale of zero to 10 by the end of my shift. Um, and we were just the interventions we were just going to continue to administer pain meds as usual comfort measures um, and we were going to continue to ambulate and i did evaluate um three hours post uh, med admin and she uh, rated her pain at a four um, so we reassessed and did a little more comfort measures to get her comfortable. Now, my assessment on the baby. Um, this is a uh, this is a baby boy, um, and he was born yesterday, so March first, twenty twenty one, at fourteen eighteen. 32 weeks um, via C section. Apgar was eight and nine. Um, we were checking glucose and this was because the mom was uh, 
She mentioned in her history was glucose intolerant, not pre-diabetic, you know, not um, type 2 diabetes, just gluten, glucose intolerant. So we did heel sticks. We checked glucose. It was at a 56, so the pediatrician was okay with that. Um, baby was 22 hours uh old by the time I did my assessment, O positive, Coombs negative. Um, at the time of my assessment, the PKU was not done, but towards the end of my clinical shift, I actually, it was the reason why I was late because I was able to do the PKU and I saw the jaundice test and um, we did um, like the O2 sats as well. Um, she did accept the, the mother accepted the hep B shot for the child. And with this baby, what we were kind of fighting about was, um, and that's the wrong term. Just what we were concerned about was feeding. So it almost seemed as if, um, mom wasn't really receptive to breastfeeding and more so receptive to the coaching that we were doing, which only translated to the baby not being properly fed. So um, baby was being fed between bottle and breast. Um, so other than that, when I did my assessment, um, baby was nice and pink, had good uh, muscle tone, was alert, um, a little jittery. I kept noticing that the baby's hands would um, you know, they do tend to be more startled, which is part of the moral reflex, but a little more than usual. And um, the pediatrician, when I actually went in to do my assessment, came in, walked in. So it was kind of nice because I was able to see that. Um, and she did confirm that he was a little more jittery than normal. Um, so all reflexes were present, rooting, sucking, uh, toe neck reflexes, breath sounds were clear. Um, an equal bilateral and normal unlabored respiratory effort heart sounds were present s1 and s2 um, less than two seconds for capillary refill uh, pulses i assessed for brachial and femoral and they were present um, abdomen was normal and soft um, baby had had his was passing stool and urine um, so everything was normal that we, um, assessed or that I assessed. So the thing that I, my recommendations were for the problem list, problem, uh, list was risk for inappropriate eating habits as a result of sleeping at breast as evidenced by mother unmotivated to stimulate baby. So like I said, it kind of goes back to the fact that mom wasn't really receptive to the coaching the breast uh, feeding coaching that we were giving her and so she wouldn't stimulate the baby the baby would just sleep at the breast and um, she would opt then to just bottle feed so I wrote that the outcomes the goal was to have optimal feeding habits and the interventions were to have lactation consultant come in for education um, once lactation came in, we realized that mom was a little more receptive. So that's my evaluation. Um, hopefully she continues to carry on with that education. Um, other than that, it was a great day on mom and baby. And 